The decades have been kind to gamers, with so many incredible classics to play through, such as the mountain of quality that one is spoiled for choice. Unfortunately, the sheer number of awful titles has been fairly sizable as well. You could be looking for something fun in the horror space and discover a decent-looking first-person adventure, only to be met with some of the worst dialogue and gameplay yet. Maybe you're a fan of an established franchise and unknowingly look into their awful multiplayer efforts. The sheer range of terrible games that have emerged over the years is honestly impressive. Here are the top 30 of the very worst. Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood you feel for the World of Darkness series and its shoddy video game adaptations. Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood is sadly not an exception, despite the mix of different forms and intriguing backdrop. The story quickly falls off a cliff and never recovers, while the stealth and combat are underwhelming on their own but immensely tedious due to the repetitive mission design. Maybe with more time and better presentation it could have been something, but as it stands, the results speak for themselves. Ed Zero Zombie Uprising D3 Publisher is usually known for its low-budget titles, be it the simple shoot-em-up action of Earth Defense Force or the hack-and-slash action of Onichanbara. Ed Zero Zombie Uprising's gameplay fits more with the latter but with a roguelite structure and randomly generated areas. It sounds like an interesting departure, and the fact that it spent some time in early access gave us some hope. Unfortunately, it falters in every single way, from the repetitive and ultimately mindless combat to the equally mindless zombie AI. Add in some technical issues and crashes, and it's just not worth the trouble or ugly aesthetic. Evil Inside the PT influence of Evil Inside is pretty obvious, right down to the story of Mark, a teenager tormented by visions investigating a single house, attempting to piece together something. With roughly one hour of playtime and jump scares that border on the irritating instead of the frightening, there's nothing noteworthy. Even if you're on some quest to play every single PT clone ever made, Evil Inside is a lackadaisically dull effort. Troll and I a story about a boy whose village is destroyed by hunters and a troll misunderstood by the world, with some co-op mixed in. What could go wrong? As it turns out, everything. The co-op content is threadbare and seemingly bolted on for the sake of it, which isn't helped by the awkward controls or awful visuals. Even for such an unorthodox setting and characters, charging $50 is a baffling decision given the level of polish and gameplay. Past Cure the story of former soldier Ian, who looks to punish those who wronged him, is beset by terrible gunplay and stealth, punctuated by awful movement and cover mechanics, and full of shoddy AI and design decisions. Terrible voice acting, laughable dialogue, and low-budget presentation make it all the more painful. Even if ignoring the story is an option, there's nothing in Past Cure worth your attention. Quantum Error like many games on this list, Quantum Error seems to have potential. Cosmic horror mixed with Unreal Engine 5's visuals, and you played as a firefighter. Beat that, Valve. Despite its cinematic approach, the gameplay fell apart due to the terrible checkpoint system, dumb enemy AI, heaps of bugs, awful stealth, repetitive levels, and sheer lack of polish. Perhaps the worst part is that it's not all that scary, which is another nail in the coffin on top of everything else. WWE 2K20 the first WWE 2K title developed without Uke's WWE 2K20 regressed in every possible way from the previous year. The visuals were awful, with some wrestlers not resembling their real-world counterparts, and the gameplay suffered due to changes in the controls. The sheer range of glitches and bugs made for hilarious viewing online, but weren't nearly as interesting while playing. Such was the quality that WWE and 2K games made the rare decision to delay the follow-up, instead taking time to improve the series. WWE 2K22 was a massive improvement, and the series has been doing better ever since. Alone in the Dark Illumination of all the horror franchises that should get a four-player co-op-focused shooter, Alone in the Dark ranks far down on the list. 
THQ Nordic gave it a shot with illumination, a droll effort with bullet sponge enemies, wonky controls, and seemingly cursed UI. The mechanics and level design leave much to be desired, as does the performance, which fluctuates wildly with messy visuals. Many called this the death knell of the franchise, and considering how it received no other titles before the recent reboot proves how right they were. Umbrella Core as many excellent horror games developers have released over the years, they are also guilty of some of the worst games ever made, especially in the Resident Evil franchise. At some point, the company asked, what if Resident Evil but esports, and created Umbrella Corps. Zombies are involved, but the entire approach from the bizarre cover system to the almost offensively sparse single-player component felt poorly executed. Barring aside all other issues, the fact that the developer tried to create an esports shooter and seemingly learned nothing from the market is baffling. Resident Evil Reverse so of course, the developer tried the competitive multiplayer approach again, not including Resident Evil Resistance, which was an asymmetrical shooter. With Resident Evil Reverse, it's more of a traditional deathmatch title, with up to six players battling as heroes and villains, as zany as it can be, especially with the ability to play as monsters and transform into horrors like the Super Tyrant and Nemesis. It's lacking in every department. There is one game mode with multiple playable characters, but at least there are plenty of microtransactions to waste one's money on. The horrible balance and lack of basic quality of life features meant a quick death for Reverse's player base, not that it had much of a chance of success. Diablo Immortal as a mobile version of Blizzard's highly successful action RPG looter, one of Diablo Immortal's most defining moments before launch was making fans angry that it exists. The years went on, and it finally launched, that too receiving a PC port, with pre-launch impressions stating it wasn't all that bad. Of course, then more people played it, and beneath the vibrantly macabre visuals and well-acted but ultimately inconsequential story, realized that it's pretty basic. Skills, loot, quests, environmental design, the list goes on. Being a mobile game didn't excuse the awful UI or insidious monetization interwoven into the progression. Blizzard probably made some improvements over the years and added some new content, but I'm forever thankful for not returning. Crossfire X Crossfire X is Smilegate's attempt to bring its massively successful free-to-play multiplayer shooter to the rest of the world. The results are mixed, from the sheer range of pay-to-win microtransactions to the awful UI and woeful list of options. If you're intrigued by the single-player campaign since Remedy worked on it, well, there's not much there either. The two operations are full of bland set pieces, very little enemy variety with some awful AI and controls that fight you at every turn. It's ultimately short, inconclusive, and awful given the pedigree of talent involved. Fast and Furious Crossroads the fact that slightly mad studios of Project Cars fame worked on this title is both sad and baffling. When you're actually doing some manner of racing, Fast and Furious Crossroads has some inkling of enjoyability. When you're driving from point to point as cutscenes play out, revisiting the same bland roads ad nauseum, it feels as mind-numbing as the film series, but with far less action. The visual quality leaves much to be desired. The gadgets are gimmicky and horrendous. That the headlining star of the series Vin Diesel is sparsely present is almost as laughable as the fact that this story connects the fate of the Furious, F9, and Hobbs and Shaw. eFootball 2022 from the generally well-respected and well-made Pro Evolution Soccer series to this car crash, eFootball 2022 is the first rebranded title in the series. Launching as a free-to-play game with microtransactions, it was quickly lambasted for its terrible controls, lackluster content and game modes, and poor visuals. Konami would release updates to the title, updating it to eFootball 2023 and now 2024, but they've had minimal impact on gameplay and only reinforced how much better the PES series used to be. Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric when you think of terrible Sonic the Hedgehog games, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 often comes up. However, for all of its faults, it was trying to be a Sonic game, unlike Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. Sure, it had the high-speed stages and all of your favorite characters, but they carried new terrible looks and awful dialogue. 
focus on the gameplay and you'll run into a litany of tech issues, from frame rate drops to excessive bugs. Not that the gameplay made either worth tolerating. Not only was Rise of Lyric the lowest rated game in the series by critics, but combined with Sonic Boom's Shattered Crystal on the 3DS, its sales are also some of the franchise's lowest. Balan Wonderworld before he was prosecuted for not one but two counts of insider trading, Yuji Naka had a vision, a vision of a baffling individual named Balan, and gameplay revolving around different costumes with unique abilities not unlike Super Mario Odyssey to platform across multiple 3D worlds. Perhaps the most intriguing thing about Balan Wonderworld isn't how nonsensical the story is or how unintuitive the gameplay felt, never mind the repeated abilities across outfits, but how endearing some found it. Yes, it was awful, but also kind of good, if you lowered your standards enough. With less than 2,100 copies sold in Japan for its first week, the majority of players probably didn't even know it existed. Flashback 2 Despite the naming, Flashback 2 is a prequel to Paul Cousset's cinematic platformer. And while its aesthetics may initially impress, it's a mess in every other way. Awful aiming controls? Check. Horrendous AI? Check. Weird design choices that ultimately bring down the experience? Check. Terrible performance and numerous bugs, some requiring you to reload the game? Check and check. It's unlikely that anyone was expecting it to top the original, let alone fade to black, but Flashback 2 is an embarrassing addition to the series. Aliens Colonial Marines Aliens Colonial Marines is a terrible game, whether it's the subpar character models and issues like screen tearing, the dumb enemy AI, which was discovered to have been caused by a typo in the code, or excessive bugs. However, it was also noted as a case for graphical downgrades in gaming, with the finished product looking nothing like the earlier demos. Then there was the whole controversy between Sega and Gearbox, with the latter reportedly shifting resources from Colonial Marines to work on Borderlands and other projects, causing the former to cancel the project. At the end of the day, mismanagement or not, it's a hot mess, and just bad all around. Bomberman Act Zero Konami has done some questionable things with its franchises over the years, but this reboot of one of its most beloved mascots is one of the dumbest. A dystopian setting with a gritty, realistic Bomberman sounds terrible already, and Act Zero adds to this. With shoddy gameplay, including first-person mode, which, against all logic, is more akin to third-person, when a game is so bad that even Hudson Soft, its developer, pans it less than a year after launch, you know things have gone wrong. The Walking Dead – Destinies Based on AMC's The Walking Dead, Destinies is billed as a narrative-driven adventure where your choices and consequences can heavily change the story. As you might have guessed, it ultimately fails in that regard and botches everything else for good measure. The combat is let down by awful controls and lopsided difficulty while the overall presentation feels muddy. Bugs and other issues abound, and the voice acting is laughably embarrassing. While the concept may have seemed intriguing, you're better off replaying Telltale's The Walking Dead even after all these years. The Quiet Man before it ended 2018, the developer ensured it had worst game of the year in the bag with The Quiet Man. A beat-em-up title with a deaf protagonist, it intermixed live-action sequences with combat and featured no audible dialogue whatsoever, leaving the player with little idea of what's going on. Of course, even developer Human Head Studios released an update allowing one to play with audio. It only further highlighted how terrible the story was. Mix in a terrible camera and awful gameplay, and the quiet man couldn't go any more quietly into the night if it tried. Skull Island Rise of Kong Game Mill Entertainment's Skull Island Rise of Kong is one of those games that's under your radar for long enough to create a false sense of security. When it's finally unleashed, the sheer awfulness of it is staggering and nearly ascends into full-blown comedy, especially when viewing some of the unfinished cutscenes. Sadly, everything gameplay-related is just too substandard to warrant spending any time. How you mess up a game about Kong, especially one that's supposed to be about beating up other creatures to this degree, is beyond us. 13 Remake We've seen some underwhelming remakes and remasters, but few manage to achieve this level of awful. 
13 Remake is based on the 2003 cell shaded shooter 13, a title that had its flaws but stood out for its style, panache, and intriguing conspiracy-focused story. The remake cuts content, removes several effects that give it that comic book feel, ruins the dialogue with strange mixing which seemingly extends to the audio, where gunshots and enemy movement aren't heard at all, and limits the weapons that can be carried. The sheer number of bugs and other issues, poor collision detection, terrible AI, frame drops is so extensive that even after a major update, it's still a shadow of what the original had to offer. Mighty Number no. 9 you would think that a spiritual successor to Mega Man would be something special. It was, but not in the way that anyone expected or wanted. Mighty No. 9 was criticized for its gameplay, which felt like a bargain bin version of Mega Man than a tribute. The atrocious voice acting and its terrible performance on consoles. Combine this with the various delays and questionable development practices, like announcing a Kickstarter for an entirely new game, and Mighty No. 9 had become infamous among Kickstarter projects. At least it holds the record for the longest credit sequence, at about 3 hours and 48 minutes. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 I would say this came out of nowhere to effectively desecrate a phenomenal franchise. However, the series was already on the downturn at this point, and various impressions leading up to the sequel's launch were far from positive. Yet, somehow, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 turned out even worse than anyone could have possibly imagined. The changed controls and new stomp mechanic interfered with the flow that fans loved about the original games. While the new levels are some of the worst in the franchise, presenting flat, uninteresting objectives, which you can't skip after completing them once. That's not including all of the bugs or performance issues despite the visuals looking worse than the PS2 era titles. Stray Souls to call Jukai Studios' third-person Unreal Engine 5 developed title a psychological horror is to conflate falling down the stairs with parkour. It's an excruciating story with some of the worst storytelling and characterization you'll ever see, which is saying a lot, considering the competition on this list. Even if you ignore all of that and try to engage with the action, it's a janky mess with the dumbest enemies where a simple dodge roll is enough to avoid any damage. Stray Souls can't even build any tension correctly, showcasing one too many creepy ghosts that do nothing to add to the tension and end up looking comical. Grey Hill Incident of all the horror games out there, someone must have realized that there simply aren't enough with grey aliens in them. The Refugium Games' Grey Hill Incident launched, and suddenly it was clear why. The absolutely tedious gameplay loop of walking and sneaking around, completing simplistic objectives while facing dialogue so bad that it's honestly impressive, wears on you almost immediately. Perhaps the funniest part is how easy it is to kill the aliens in question mitigating any sense of tension. Add in the multitude of bugs and performance issues, and the Grey Hill incident, much like its aliens, should have remained under wraps. Ride to Hell Retribution The OG worst game ever made, launched to universal hate, Ride to Hell Retribution went from an open world game seemingly set to launch in 2009 to this mess that arrived in 2013. The biker-focused action-adventure is almost impressive in how much it gets wrong. Every aspect is just rife with issues that are terrible alone and drag the experience down as a whole. Perhaps the only reason it doesn't top the list is because of expectations, or lack thereof. That doesn't excuse its failings, but know that even when compared to the very worst games out, Ride to Hell Retribution still manages to make it a close race. The Lord of the Rings Gollum one of the worst Lords of the Rings games ever made, perhaps the worst adaptation of the Lord of the Rings in any medium. It's a shame that Daedalic Entertainment's take on the iconic character turned out like this, but there's simply nothing redeeming about it, from the many, many bugs and awful character models and cutscenes to the poorly designed stealth gameplay. Even dual personalities and choices to nudge Gollum closer to either innocent or evil were badly executed. Say what you will, but when a title is bad enough that a publisher shuts down its internal game development division to go back to publishing, that says it all. The Day Before when it seemed 2023 would end without any more contenders to the worst game of the year throne, the day before would finally launch for PC on Steam Early Access. A few days later, its developer, Fantastic, would shut down. 
citing the poor reception. Whether you were one of the unfortunate few to know of the whole mess or not, there's no denying that the day before was the pits. An extraction shooter misleadingly billed as an open-world survival game, it offered a bland world lacking in zombies or points of interest. One-dimensional characters with atrocious voice acting and baffling design decisions bound to tedious gameplay. That it was so outright boring after so many delays and much deceit is a real kicker and puts it slightly above the others with its mediocrity. That's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.